the Holy Spirit has been, or the Lord has been putting upon me. Even in my dream, I was in the mall saying, I need to preach. I got to preach. God is wanting us and wanting, putting upon my heart to get out the, the importance, guys, of preparing yourself for the rapture. And this is what leads me to the parable of the virgins. We all know this parable. It's Matthew 20. There is five wise virgins and five foolish virgins. The five foolish virgins is the asleep church right now. The lukewarm church. People like I'll tell people, I was trying to tell people about my dream at work today. And you know how you just, you're trying to talk to somebody about something spiritually and they just, you know, they kind of have that look on their face. Like they really just don't care or they kind of roll their eyes or they kind of look at you like you're a little bit crazy. And I was trying to tell people about my dream today where I saw, I told them I saw in, in, in writing where it said in my dream that Jesus is coming and I was trying to, and they were just... People are so asleep, guys. They don't even know. They And I just pray that these videos that I am making, all glory to God and God alone. I'm just a vessel that he's using. That when somebody sees this, that they will repent. You have to repent. You don't understand the importance of repentance and preparing yourself for the return of Jesus Christ. You really don't. So I, wanna re I, I want to ask you. Oh, okay, let me go over Matthew 25 really, really quick. I just want to read it. I know we all know this scripture, but um, I want to go over Matthew 25 really, really quick. I thought I had it marked. Okay, so obviously the parable of the ten virgins. So then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and they went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. And those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom, which is Jesus, was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And that goes to tell you right there that even the wise virgins, because it says they all slumbered and slept. So that even means the wise virgins can, are going to back they're going it's gonna it's going to be it, we have to finish our races strong you know and I have been doing this lately getting spiritually lazy you know thinking I've been thinking for the past four years Jesus is gonna come and sometimes the enemy will put seeds of doubt in my mind but I know what the Lord is showing me he is at the door he is past the door everything is ready every the wedding feast is ready all the preparations are ready the only thing that we are waiting on is for the signal for that trumpet to blow and for Jesus to come and pull out, pull us out and immediately the tribulation will begin because when people go missing all over the world, it's going to it's going to be like the left behind movie kind of in a way where it's going to cause supreme panic. It's just going to be crazy. But anyways, so and it says um, they all slumbered and slept. So and at midnight, a cry was heard and behold, the bridegroom, which is Jesus, is coming to go go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps and the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our oil lamps are going out. But the wise answered saying, no, lest there should not be enough for us and for you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. Jesus came as they kept on thinking they were having more time. The foolish virgins will continue to mock the rapture. They will continue to tell you that there is more time. You have more time. I can repent tomorrow. I'm going to stop doing that tomorrow. That is a, a, a foolish virgin. Okay. So, um, no, let's should have been. Okay. So, but rather go and to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy... The, the bridegroom, excuse me, the bridegroom came, Jesus came, and those who were ready went in with him and the, to the wedding, and the door was shut. That is the door to the ark. Who, what is the ark right now? We are living, it says in the Bible, that when Jesus comes back, when the Son of Man returns, it's going to be as in the days of Noah. What were they doing in the days of Noah? They were highly wicked, okay? People didn't want to talk. They weren't honoring God. They were going and worshiping being false gods and false idols idols they were in all types of sin and they did not listen to Noah he was the and his family who were preaching righteousness who were warning them that the flood was coming warning them what was about to happen and they mocked him those are that's just like an analogy to the to the foolish virgins okay so afterward the other virgins came also saying Lord Lord open to us but he answered and said assuredly I say to you I do not know you my God, how would it feel if Jesus told you he does not know you? 
how how do you know if Jesus knows you? And this goes back to what I was going to talk about, about your, I don't want to get too off subject, but about your relationship with God. Does Jesus know you? And how do you know if he knows you? Because it says in his word, that many are going to say on that day, Lord, Lord, and he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Do you, does Jesus know you? Do you have an intimate personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Do you have a prayer life? Are you repenting and turning away from your sin? Sin that you know deep down in your heart is unacceptable to God and what is written in his word. Are you doing the things that you need to be doing to preparing to have a relationship with him? Are you fasting? Do you read the Bible every day? Do you take that time out every single day and read the Bible and have that time with him? And it says, watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the son of man is coming. Guys, oh my goodness. So are you a wise? Okay, so this is the parable with the, the, the five wise and the five foolish. So the five wise virgins are the ones who are serving God completely right now. We're not perfect, but we're striving to live in holiness and righteousness every day. We are striving to have that personal relationship with him. We have surrendered all to Christ. We are living for Christ. We are like a vessel for him. So we're going through the purification process right now. That's what we're doing. We're going through the purification process. So our, the five foolish virgins are going to have to go through the purification during the tribulation because the five foolish virgins were not ready. They had no oil in their lamps, meaning they were not filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay. They were not filled with the fruit of the Holy Spirit because the Bible says that by, by their fruits, we will know them. You know, you will know them by their fruit. And that leads me to the second thing. Um, so the, the, the foolish virgins are going to have to go through the tribulation. They are going to have to be purified through the great tribulation. And they are going to have to die for Christ. You're going to have to be beheaded. That is the only other option that you have. And I talked about that in, in my last video about my other rapture dream. You're going to have to be beheaded for Christ. I'm not, I'm not here to... Um, I'm not, I, I'm not here to, to lie to you. I'm here to give you the undiluted truth of God's word. And that's what it says. If you, if either you take the mark of the beast or you are going to have to get your head cut off for Christ. So those are the five foolish virgins, guys. And the five wise, you want to be a wise virgin. You want to be awake. Do you know what's going on spiritually in this world right now? How can you look at the state that our, not only our country's in, but the world is in and not know that Jesus is about to come back? So the second scripture that um, he gave me was John about being a wise virgin or being a foolish virgin was John 15, 4 through 7. And um, it's talking about Jesus being the vine. Um, okay, because if you have a relationship with God, it says that you, it says in his word that we are going to abide in him. That means we are going to have fruit. We're going to have things. You're going to be able to tell by a true Christian's life, the things that we are doing in our life, we're going to produce fruit. We're going to produce good works. We're going to produce, we're going to be doing out there doing God's will. We're going to be spreading the gospel. We're going to be warning. We're going to be sharing God's love and forgiveness towards those that, towards everyone really that, that needs it to everyone we come across. So John 15, 4 through 7, it says, um, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. We are the branches. Jesus is the vine. Okay. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Um, for without me, you can do nothing. And if anyone does not abide in me, that is the foolish virgins, the ones that are not abiding in Christ. So, um, so uh, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you are, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. That is the parable. That's why he was telling us to be ready. That's the order we have in our lamps what are you producing in your life for the kingdom of god people you say you're a christian i'm just saying this in general to whoever could be watching this that is a lukewarm christian or whatever because i know a lot of people i see on here are, are my brothers and sisters in christ that are on fire for the lord but to you to you who do not you do not have a relate what are you doing for the kingdom of god and this is something else the lord wanted me to touch on are you going to go to heaven empty handed? Are you going to barely make it in by the skid of your little pinky toe? Is that how you're going to get into heaven? Are you going to go before the judgment seat of Christ when we all go 
what really is called the Bema Seat. That's what Christians go to. And it's not a judgment because we don't get judged if you are a true Christian and you're really saved because Jesus' blood has washed our sins away. So the Christians um, don't go to the great white throne judgment, but we go to what we call the Bema Seat, which is the, the, the judgment of, of Jesus where he looks at our life and we'll either get rewards for the things that we've done for God in his kingdom or we don't, you know, he, we're going to be judged on what we have done. So what have you done for the kingdom of God? Are you just a Sunday Christian? Have you told anybody about the gospel of Jesus Christ? Have you, have you, have you just done any good works that the Holy Spirit says that we should be doing in his word? Have you helped homeless people? Have you helped have you helped your coworkers? Have you helped your family? Because it all starts at home. If you can't even share the gospel with the people that are in your own home, you have no business trying to share it to your coworkers or to anybody out on the street. Are you going to are you going to go to heaven empty-handed? What is going to be your reward? Or are you going to stand there in humiliation when all the saints of the ages are around and your life gets played back and you have no rewards? And I'm not saying that you're supposed to do things for the rewards. That is, that that that's that's coming from a root of, of pride. That's not what we should be doing. But it says in the Bible that our faith will produce good works, not works for salvation. But when you get saved and you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, you can't help but to love people. You can't help but to be merciful. You can't help but to want to lend a hand. You can't help but to want to share the good news of the gospel and the forgiveness that God has given you to whatever to everybody else. So you can let them know. You can't help but to want to break people free. Because you used to be that person. So what are you going to heaven with? Think about that. Do you want to stand? This is the only life that we have. How many souls are you bringing with you to, into the kingdom of God? When you get before that judgment seat of Christ, how many souls are you bringing with you? Is there one soul? Is there two? Is there five? How many people have you prayed for to be saved other than your immediate children, family, and, and things like that. Who are you praying for? What are you doing for the kingdom of God? That is why we were put here to have, to be in God's will. Are you a wise virgin? Are you producing fruit in your life? Because if you're not, what I just read in John, in John 15, four through seven, you will be cut off and thrown into the fire. Meaning your works are going to be nothing. It's going to, they're going to be burned up. They're not going to pass the test of God's consuming fire. So if I just I just really wanted to touch on that, guys. It's just so much to be thinking about. And I just want to say that holiness is a big thing to God. And and we're not perfect. And I, I know that we mess up. But the thing is, is that when we mess up as true believers in Christ, we are immediately going to repent. You're immediately going to feel that conviction. You're immediately going to confess it, ask forgiveness, and do your best not to do that again. You learn from it. And obedience and holiness are a huge thing to God. We are going to stand before a holy God. That's, and somebody disagreed with me on my last video when I said that the rapture is a reward. I 1000 hands down believe that it is a reward for the saints, for the bride of Christ who are going through trials and testings and sufferings and not giving up on God. It's for those, it's for the bride who is being purified and refined in God's furnace of affliction and refining fire. It is for those who have laid everything down and said, God, I I'm here. Whatever you want to do with my life, whatever you ask me to do, I am willing to do it. The rapture is a reward, guys. And it's for those, Jesus, when, when, when that when that when that trumpet blows how are you going to be found and i keep on going back to this because the holy spirit keeps on putting me back to this how are you going to be found are you going to be found when that trumpet blows that day unexpectedly are you going to be found having sex out of marriage are you going to be found living with your boyfriend or your girlfriend and you out of marriage out of wedlock are you going to be doing drugs that day are you going to be popping pills that day are you going to be drinking alcohol and getting drunk that day are you going to be at work cussing your co-workers out that day what are you going to, are you going to be caught in a homosexual bisexual there's so many names for it now transgender whatever it may be relationship how are you going to be caught on the day 
that the trumpet for the rapture blows. Just think about that. We should be living every day in holiness and righteousness to God. And as Sister Christine told me oh, a while back, as we were kind of debating and going back and forth on our on on a post, and she said she told me, and this really stuck with me, that she never would want to put herself in a compromising position ever to to miss the rapture, to miss anything. She would never want to put herself in a compromising position. And that those words really stuck true to me. And even though I knew it, it really encouraged me and challenged me to think like that. It's just not worth it. And I'm not perfect. I have had some things recently that I've let crawl back into my life that I needed to repent of immediately. Um, and I was kind of dwelling in it for like a month. And then I, I need I had to get out. And I believe that God gave me. You know how dreams will sometimes just encourage you and just set you on fire. So when I had that dream a week ago, when I saw Jesus coming in the clouds and and he told me on that thing, it was written out. It said, get rid of everything now for when the, when the trumpet blows, there will be no more time. Oh my goodness. How much more blunt can that be? In my dream last night, it's on a big sign written out. Jesus is coming. He, it, it like, it gave me that motivation that I needed just to be right. Not that I don't want to be right. Cause I, I do because we should be right because we love god we want to please him in all that we do but my goodness guys he is coming and i believe it with all of my heart i believe it's any day now and i want people to know i want people to know i don't want your blood on my hands i am warning you when you see this video you will have no excuse i am warning you that jesus is coming i am warning you to repent i am warning you that you do not want to be left behind today is the day of salvation choose this day whom you will serve do not believe the lie that the lukewarm church is pressing out that if you say the sinner's prayer and you believe in Jesus and you invite him into your heart and you believe he died and arose again and you accepted him as your savior but you go on living you said that little sinner's prayer and you're saved no that is not the truth that is a lie from the pit of hell you have to repent you have to have a relationship with God once you say that sinner's prayer and you believe in faith because that's what because that's what salvation is. We receive salvation by faith and faith alone. It's everything that Jesus did and nothing that we could ever do. So if you said the sinner's prayer and you go back to living your life exactly how you were before you said that sinner's prayer, then you're not saved. You are not saved at all. Because when you have the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, oh, it is hot in here. I feel the Holy Spirit, y'all. Uh, like, I'm serious. <laughs> like, my face feels hot. Um. But when you get saved, the Holy Spirit, I mean, he does a mighty work and he sometimes he's real gentle with it. It just depends on if you've been hurt, if you abuse, if you have soul wounds, but he will constantly be convicting, constantly be encouraging, constantly bringing up your sin or whatever is hidden down in the depths of your heart of heart to get you into because that is the job of the Holy Spirit. The whole job of the Holy Spirit, once a believer, once a, a person believes in Jesus is to come inside of the believer and prepare them to get to heaven. That is the job of the Holy Spirit, to convict and to prepare, to convict and to prepare the bride of Christ to get us ready for the return of Jesus. And not only that, but also to prepare people who, you know, who die and or, or whatever it may be to get them to heaven. That is the job of the Holy Spirit and also to restrain evil. Um, we know that he restrains evil. That's why when the bride goes all it, it, the Bible says that um, the restrainer is who is restraining most of the evil in this world. So, guys, I just want to touch, please, it is not worth it. Anything that you are doing right now, you have to get rid of it. If you have not, if you said the sinner's prayer at one point in your life, you might even go to church every Sunday. You might go to Bible study. You might sing in the choir, whatever it may be. Does Jesus know you? Do you pray to him? Do you fast? Do you read his word? Do you spend that one-on-one -on -one time to him? Or is he going to say to you, depart from me for I never knew you? And people are going to say, well, Lord, Lord, I pro we prophesied in your name. We cast out demons in your name. We, we did all of this in your name. I sung in the choir. I did all this. I fed some homeless people. Do, does he know you personally? Is your name written in the book of life? Can you say right now that Jesus can look down and be like, Yep, I was just talking to her. Mm -hmm. I had a conversation with him just an hour ago. Does he know you personally by your name? Does he? Do you hear his voice? Do you feel his presence? Are you living in holiness and righteousness? It is so important, guys. We're, we are the modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. We are worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. God has been so patient. God is going to send judgments on this earth like it has never been seen before. Is it worth it?
That's just the question that bottom that, that, that runs down to it. Do you love Jesus or not? Either you're on his side or you're on the dark side. There's only two sides that you can be on. Either you're fully surrendered for Christ or you're lukewarm in the middle, which he said not to be because he will spew you out of his mouth. Or are you cold? And he said, I'd rather you be hot or cold. Please, guys, please repent anything that's in your life. Ask the Holy Spirit to search your heart. Ask the Holy Spirit to show things that are hindering your relationship with God that are unpleasing to him. And let me tell you, if you ask with the sincerity of your heart, he will show you. And sometimes it's painful. Sometimes he'll show me things and I'm like, oh, man, I didn't even know that was in there. Like, really, Lord, I thought I was over that or I thought I forgiven him or her, whatever it may be. But guys, I'm um, let me see if there's anything. Um what yeah that's another thing what have you sacrificed for christ there what are you picking up your cross daily and following him what have you sacrificed in your life for jesus he sacrificed and he gave all for us so what have you sacrificed in your life have you laid anything down what is it right now uh, examine yourself what is it right now that needs to be laid down before that trumpet blows, what is it? Is it an ungodly relationship? Is it some type of addiction? Is it some type of attitude? Is it some type of bitterness or unforgiveness or anger or hatred, desire for revenge, any type of pride? What is it in your life or in your heart that you know you need to get rid of? Ask God for deliverance. He will bring you out of it. We are more than overcomers in Christ. Oh my gosh. It, we just, I'm so excited, guys. We're about to go home. This is really, we are the generation. We, do you know all the prophets in the Bible? All of heaven wants to be in the position that we're in right now. All of heaven wants to be, they, they would love to have been alive for such a time as this. We are created for this, guys. We are going to see Jesus come back. We are going to see Jesus come back. Jesus. On the clouds we're gonna hear that trumpet blow god what a glorious day guys oh my goodness what a glorious day so i just wanted to encourage you with my dream i saw jesus is coming in big letters last night i'm encouraging all my brothers and sisters do not grow weary do not grow weak do not backslide do not give up and so many saints are getting attacked right now i was getting attacked i got some issues going on with my 13 year old son i mean i I have been getting attacked. I mean, my I was basically being persecuted for my belief in the Lord. Do not give up. Do not give up. Satan knows exactly what time it is. He knows the Bible better than us. I believe he knows when the rapture. Well, I guess he can't know because only the Father knows. But I believe he knows right around when. And he knows that we are so close. So if you're going through attacks, you're going through trials and testings and service, be encouraged right now, beloved, that we are about to go home. Just when all of this, all of this won't matter. This is nothing but a short, a short little time. And we're going to look back when we get to heaven and we're all up there and we're like, hey, and we're at the marriage uh, supper of the lamb. We're going to look, we're going to look back and we're going to think about all the things that we thought were so horrible and what we were going through. And we're just going to see that that was, that was the Lord. He was allowing it. He will, he, Satan can't do nothing to you without God's permission. And God, God will allow Satan to pressure you to bring about, you know, I want to say suffering in a way, if you get what I'm saying, he will allow Satan to do that in your life only to refine you only to burn off all those things that don't need to be there, to grow you stronger in your faith, to teach you to lean on him all the time, because that is exactly what we need to be doing. Just be encouraged, guys. Repent. That's all you have to do. As long as we have today, as long as God is merciful enough to give us another day tomorrow, you can repent. You can have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You can be ready for the rapture. He is so merciful. He has been so merciful waiting. God is being mocked so bad right now in our whole entire world, in our country. It is it is despicable what, what Christians are going through all over the world and already the persecution in the Middle East and for the sake of gospel, for the sake of Jesus Christ, guys. So I just encourage you to be ready and don't give up and encourage one another. If you know somebody's going through a hard time, pray for them, reach your hand out to them, encourage them. You know, some things as we mature and we grow in Christ, some things are not meant for the babes in Christ. Do you understand what I'm saying? So a brand new Christian or a baby Christian that really hasn't been walking with the Lord for a great amount of time, sometimes 
that knowledge and revelation, they just can't comprehend it yet. Because I can remember all the things that God is showing me now and has been for like the past two or three years. I, if he would have been doing that when I was first got saved, when I first thought I was laying my life down for Christ, even though I'm still living in sexual sin, I, it would I would it probably would have drove me away. I probably would have been like, what is he doing? So you got to be careful. Just encourage one another. Be careful with the things that you're sharing. All right to those who are in a, a babes in Christ, but always exhort and edify one another. But anyways, that's all I have to say, guys. Glory be to God. I'm just going to close this with a prayer. And um, I thank y'all for listening. And Jesus is coming. He is coming. He is coming. We're going to hear that trumpet blow any day now. Um, so God bless y'all. So Father God, I just want to thank you for using me as a vessel. I'm here. I'm available for you to use. I pray, Father, that you will just touch hearts, God. Lord, turn hearts back to you. Cause dry bones to come alive again in your presence by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord. I pray that you will pour out your Rudach HaKadosh Holy Spirit upon all those that are listening right now and upon all those that are going to be listening in the future, Lord. I pray that you will convict their hearts. I pray that souls will be saved, Lord Jesus, and from the depths of hell and that their names, that names will be found written in your land book of life. I pray, Father, that you will please work on the lost souls that are here in our country. I pray, Father God, for all those that have been deemed unworthy in our society eyes, like the homeless and even drug dealers and drug addicts and prostitutes and strippers and all those that we turn our nose down on, Father, that you will just pour out your Holy Spirit upon those lost souls, Father, that you would just draw them unto you to bring them to Jesus, to have a personal relationship with them, Lord. I pray that you will have mercy upon our nation, Father God. I pray, Father, that you will help wake up the lukewarm church for those that are believing that Trump is going to save this nation. I pray, Father, that you will just let your knowledge and your wisdom and your understanding and revelation on who Trump really is to be known to the lukewarm church. Wake up our brothers and sisters, Father God. Wake up the lukewarm pastors. Wake up those who don't know the times that we are living in. I pray that you will use every outlet, Father, that you that you have, whether it's Facebook or YouTube or Twitter or the TV or newspapers or videos or word of mouth or street preaching, whatever it may be, dreams and visions, pour out your Holy Spirit, your Lord. Use every outlet that you have to wake the lost souls up. I pray that hearts will be turned to you. I pray that you will prepare us for your rapture, Lord. I pray that you will find us worthy to go with you in the rapture, Father. I pray that you will find us worthy to stand before your beautiful Son, Lord Jesus Christ, on that day when we hear the trumpet and not shrink back from him in shame. I pray that you will find us worthy to escape these judgments and the darkness and the wrath that is so quickly coming upon this earth, Lord. And I thank you for making a way out for us. And I and I just thank you, Jesus. And I seal these prayers at your blood. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Be encouraged. Jesus is coming. Shalom, shalom.